Okay, this is a lesson on how to practice to get comfortable with the style of Reverend Gary Davis. Um, as always, if you're happy with the tone and the way you're playing and how it sounds, and I suggest you record it all the time with your phone, you can always hit the delete button. But like listening to yourself play while you're not playing is tremendously helpful, I think. Um, so you can take everything with a grain of salt, but I've been playing Davis for a long time. Studied with a lot of the guys who studied with Davis. If you're looking for tablature to learn the songs, there's tons out there. Ernie Hawkins is the man, Stefan Grossman. I mean, that's just two, but I strongly suggest live human being teachers. It's, even if you see him once a month, you need create, you know, some kind of criticism. I hate to use that word on your technique, but it's a philosophy of mine that it's so much easier to learn the style of the guy first, then learn the songs, because that way you'll have a lot more freedom, you won't be fighting, you won't be locked in to one like set way, and we know all these guys, all the blues dudes, all the greats, the country blues guys, they never played anything exactly the same way twice. I mean, they, even if they tried, they probably couldn't. So this is to get some of the basic fundamental techniques down of Reverend Gary Davis. So if you break down his music, you're going to find, you know, the progressions are certain ways that he repeats himself. There's certain licks that he uses, a grab bag of stuff. But in general, it's single string runs, syncopated chord movements. I'll show you some of the chords to work on. And his patented role, the Reverend Gary Davis role. So those three things, and there's a lot more. And I'm simplifying it, but this will get you going. I'm trying to get an angle where you can see my strings. So, to warm up, if you're not used to picks, if you want to sound like Davis, you really should use picks. You don't have to, but, I mean, for his style. Because it's kind of like a strumming rhythm style. About 80% of the notes he plays is, are with his thumb. So, first of all, I use metal picks, and I use plastic Golden Gate thumb pick. The key with the thumb pick is make sure the pick is above the fingernail. If you look at videos of Davis, he rides it really high up on his thumb. The reason is the movement of your thumb parallel to the strings it would be identical. If I'm playing Mississippi John Hurt, it's the same exact movement, I just don't have a, a pick. If it's Hurt, which I'll do something on later, you're going to grab as much string as you can with the thumb. You attack the strings. And that's the deal with Davis. He has a heavy right hand, he attacks the strings, you hit multiple strings, you're shooting for like one note, but you get those sympathetic strings going, and that's what makes the sound that he has. It's all in the right hand. Like he used to say, you need a sporting right hand. So the way I warm up almost every day is, I think I got this from Doyle Dykes, I'm not sure, but anyway, I'm playing every note, every fret of the guitar. So I'm just walking my way up to the, then I come back down, slide it up slide that finger up and you're alternating you see my right hand here it's thumb index thumb index very natural feel to the right hand thumb is kind of parallel to the strings the index finger just curls back up into your hand now I'm doing this very slow and gentle but this will help you if you're not used to picks or playing very low notes on the guitar with your index finger. Your hand just slides up and down from the sixth string to the first string as needed. Once you get this going up to the top, you're going to turn around and come all the way back down. If you can go all the way up, say the 12th fret, come back down without missing a note, so to speak, you're on your way <laughs> to, to playing single string runs. Now, once you get really fluid with this, and I would say, you know, a nice walking tempo, try to play it rhythmically. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and... You can change it to triplets. swing time stuff.
messing around with your right hand. So it's like thumbs. One and two. Thumb, 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 thumb. All with the index. Any kind of variation you can think of with your right hand as far as index and thumb. That is going to give you the freedom when you need to play the Davis stuff where he might double thumb things or, you know, however he does it. Your fingers are just going to lead the way. And then once you get that going, you know, eventually it'll be something like that. I mean, whatever tempo, slow, fast, it doesn't matter. Mess with the rhythms. It's great right left hand coordination between the two. So if you practice that, then when you come across a single string run in a tablature from those guys who have the tablature or the videos out there, um, it won't be that difficult for you to, you can just look at it, kind of get an idea what's going on. As far as tablature goes, to me it's a road map. It just gets you to the right place. Um, you can be as exact as you want in copying that stuff and then take it from there, but I wouldn't kill yourself over that, okay? So... That's pretty much single string stuff. The other thing he does is a Davis roll. Okay? He does it all the time, everywhere in this ragtime stuff. So it's thumb, index, thumb, thumb, index, index, thumb, index. I'm doing it here in the G position. G chord up here. So I'm copping that open D string. not set for any string he'll do it on inside rolls and ragtime stuff but you want to practice that you want to get that roll so it's rhythmically extremely comfortable and you can do it on any chord any place on the guitar so let me just do that again for you it's thumb index thumb thumb index index thumb index that's eight notes, eight eighth notes if you want, however you want to count it. Sometimes they'll just like have the first or the last one as a quarter note, so it's like. Or. A lot of times they'll have that last note in the roll. If he can cop an, an open string, he'll use that to change position. Davis uses open strings to change chord positions all the time. So once again, the Davis roll. And the dog's barking. So I'm gonna leave you with these two things and I'll do another one on his chord shapes. All right, so enjoy, any feedbacks, welcome. Take care, have a great day.